Hey, this is Dan Luce from tinyhouseproject.wordpress.com. This is day eight of my tiny house build. Um, today we, uh, we uh, my dad worked on the front uh, compartment. You can see that that kind of framed out and, and sheathed. Still got to work on the doors, and um, and I worked on the uh, roughing in the the electrical on the inside. Let me walk around. And I'll show you that. Like I said, the days of the days of having something uh, significant done or appearing to be significant are over. So it, uh, the house looks very similar to, to what you've seen previously. But you can see all the electrical has been roughed in. One thing, uh, these boxes, as they come, they come with little plastic tabs on the side of them, which is uh, which catches on the on the side of a stud, so that it it holds the plastic just far enough for drywall. But since we're using um, uh, since we're using the wood slat siding, they're a little, it holds it off a little bit too far. I know I found on the uh, on the last build, and so um, you need to cut those off. I'll show you what I'm talking about. These little little plastic pieces right there. Um, you also uh, what what was delivered to me from Home Depot was the um, the most economical uh, junction boxes or boxes, and uh, I went ahead and switched them out for the heavy duty ones. You'll you'll notice this is what was delivered to me. These. Uh, you know, does, it, does anything look wrong with that? The uh, they're, they're, the plastic is so thin that that they just you know they flex very easily, and this one looks like it's you know somehow got melted. So the heavy duty ones are only you know a couple pennies more, uh, maybe 60 cents more or so, and uh, these are these are rock solid. So if you're um, if you're putting in an order for anything or if you're picking them up, you know I, I would recommend spending the extra extra couple bucks um, to get those. This electrical is a little bit more complicated than uh, than my mom's, uh, mainly because of the second floor. Um, you know, I've got uh, I've got switches up there so that um, I didn't want I didn't want anybody who was living here to have to go um, either either go into a dark spot or have to get down to turn off lights or anything. So uh, there's two switches up there. They're both three-way switches, and then there's a switch down here uh, for the loft. So you can turn the lights on to the loft before you go up there, and then once you get up, you can turn the lights back, um, you know, you can turn turn them on or off from either location, basically. So when you're up there, you can, you know, uh, you, you're walking into a, a lighted place. And there's also another three-way switch up there that corresponds to the switch uh, here, so that, um, you know, you don't, have to, uh, you don't have to turn the lights off down here before you go up into the loft and walk across the dark room. You can, uh, you can, you know, safely crawl up into the loft and then, and then turn the lights off down here. I, I thought that would be a nice, uh, a nice feature. The uh, roofer also contacted us, and so we got a quote for, for them today. Um, that came in right where I expected, just a little bit under 900 bucks. So, um, so that's a pretty good deal, I think. And um, so hopefully, he said that might be able to, um, we might be able to pick that up on Thursday. And um, if so, you know, hopefully Thursday morning and then we have a um you know almost two days i gotta leave saturday afternoon saturday early morning or early afternoon and um so hopefully we'll have enough time to finish that i, I would really like to get the roof done before i leave and then uh and then finally we had an insulation guy come out and uh i talked to two insulation guys yesterday and one of them uh indicated that i could be looking at a price of around 500 dollars, and that got me really excited because i think to um to insulate this thing myself would cost around around that much and so, um, you know, the problem with insulating it myself, the thing that I'm not crazy about is that I, I would use two inch foam and that only uses, um, you know, partial, a part of the cavity. You know, I've got the cavity in the walls is, uh, you know, you've got, a, you've got a stud, which is three and a half inches. And so, you know, it'd be nice to have, uh, you know, it'd be nice to have three and a half inches of insulation in there. But um, if I use the two inch foam, then I'm using two inches and then I could add on the three quarter like I did uh, in the subfloor. And I got two and three quarters, but it would just be better to, um, you know, if I could spray it in. So um, the first guy indicated that it might be around $500, which seemed just really low. Everything I had researched, I was, uh, it was coming in at, you know, my research was coming in at around $1,200. So, um, so he's coming tomorrow. I'm interested to see what he says when he actually sees this place. But the guy that came today gave me a quote of $1,700, which is, uh, you know, I mean, that would be, that would be 15%, uh, around 15% of the total cost of the trailer would be in spray foam, which I think is just, is just a little bit ridiculous. So, um, so I, got a, I, got a, I got a bad feeling that uh, I'm going to be out here in the middle of the night um, cutting down some foam, trying to, uh, trying to fill in all these walls before I leave too. So we'll see. We'll see tomorrow. The guy comes then, and uh, 
in the meantime, uh, we'll, we'll be working on the plumbing. Plumbing should be done tomorrow. We need the, we need the plumbing done before, um, especially if we have the spray foam, we need that done before then. And um, that's about it. So, uh, so yeah. All right. Talk to you guys later. Bye.